jump in. I'm jumping in because we have received Warren. word that we're ready to get into the series, and so that's enough out of us. Champion Select's on the board. Atlas, take it away, my friend. Thank you so much, Dash. And here we are into Champion Select for game number one. Already, we're off to a fantastic start, gentlemen, because Yumi has been banned away first on the red side. Silas and LeBlanc taken away from Chovy here by T1. You're going to see a lot of these bans on these champions. Silas, one of Chovy's best this year. Champion he can carry on LeBlanc, where we've already seen him have great success. Explosive damage dealer here in in a meta where it's one of the best, best picks you can have if you want Chovy to be the damage dealer, they'll take the Jarvan away as well. Was well, a little worried there. If they didn't see a TF ban, when yep. Silas and LeBlanc are both banned, I would be very upset. Um, and fortunately, that does come through. Now, the main pick has been things like the MF uh, that have been incredibly high prior, although Korean teams in particular and Gumayushi himself, fantastic Aphelios players, still a multitude of options available. The Lulu that the desk already went into, but also the Fresh. Um, but they are going to swap off that, and the Graves have been one of the, I think, breakout picks that we didn't really expect to see as much of, been incredibly strong in the top lane. Yeah, and Kanner has been doing the most damage on his team, and I think that that is going to continue to be the fact. Yep. Because uh, Graves does way too much work. He is very, very strong. I 100% uh, expect a uh, Renekton to be picked up, but they don't need to lock it in right now if they don't want to. It's going to be pretty standard here on the side of Hama Life Esports with Misfortune for Deft and uh, Willa picking up the Xin Zhao. They'll take the Xin Zhao over the Viego. I was a little bit surprised to see that because we've seen so much success with Willa on recent games times, right? With the Viego over the Xin Zhao, has a lot more versatility in team fights, a lot more explosive power. And they're just going to take that one right away very early, very face up. And this means the Aphelios does go over, of course, to T1. Yeah, it can be Aphelios and Lulu locked in as well. Yeah. And of course, Lulu, theoretically, a flex pick. They do have the best mid lane Lulu player of all time. So they could flex it, but I don't think anyone wants to see Faker on Lulu ever again, uh, to be perfectly frank, as it is going to be some consideration before they actually lock that one in. I do really like the Lulu as well, because you have the Grave. So even in a scenario where your Gumayushi gets sniped down, you are still able... Uh, the upside of leaving a Lulu up is that you are still always going to have a good pick between the Fresh and the Lulu, right? No matter what happens, unless they ban both, which is a really heavy investment, it's going to be comfort coming through here for Ona. Yeah, and what do we think about the Talon being locked in last year? I mean, I think that would work with the Lulu as well, but now there is going to be flexibility to ban it away as Aurelia being considered for either Morgan or Trophy. Both oh. have played it, and Trophy's Aurelia is one of the most terrifying picks that's in the meta at the moment. I, I like the Talon for Owner. It really suits his playstyle. He's a lot more about ganking, getting over those walls, putting even some power in the bottom side of the map, something we don't see Willer do almost ever. But what's really interesting about not taking the Lulu is it's really difficult at this moment in time for Hanalei Life Esports to ban the Lulu and the Thresh and the Rakan that could come as well. Like you have so much, so many different options right now that even though Lulu has historically been the strongest and the most commonly paired, you don't have to pick it up right here necessarily. What I do really like is that Hanalei Life waits with picking up this Leona until a jungler is locked in for Ono. Ono has been defaulting to the Poppy a lot and trying to play Arele into Poppy is a miserable experience. Don't want to get into that as more comfort being banned away. The Rise was a pick I haven't gotten the chance to talk about, but especially during playoffs, T1 leaned heavily on this pick to generate insane amount of tempo and swing around mid-game objectives. Uh, and that is something that I could still see uh, Faker go back to. I do think it's going to be the Aurelia for Morgan. Because yeah. the Camille, I don't think at this point you can lock in. You're going to be a full AD composition, which you don't want. And oh, you... Oh, 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 boy. Yeah, the Zoe pick here is fantastic. Obviously, sleeps work extremely well with Misfortune's ultimate. Bullet time going to go through. Uh, the other champion I was thinking about right now, considering the bands that would have been great for Chovy with this composition that has such a frontline, is actually Victor. But you have great frontlining. It's going to be very difficult to collapse on the Zoe. She can set up for so much damage in this comp. Yeah, and this is a pretty understandable Ariana pickup here. If you go down the uh, the tier list, I think that Ariana fits in the middle of the all the mid laners that have been banned away. Chovy's been very outspoken in the past about not enjoying playing Zoe, even though he was one of the best that we've had in the LCK. But Thresh coming through. Think, yeah, speaking of best in the LCK, Carrier <gasps> definitely the best at that. As Echo being uh, hovered, I don't think it'll be locked in, but this is something that Carrier has been playing in the support role. 
No, not gonna happen. It's gonna be the Thresh, but there's so many champions that can be played, right, with the Cephelios. I think Thresh I is a way- we had to actually announce that <laughs> stat. It doesn't really bothers me, to be perfectly honest. It's a, it's a way safer pick, and now you have an incredibly well-rounded composition here as T1. Uh, and I, I think if you're looking at Hanoi Life Esports right now, with all the bands that have come through and how late you pick this up, the Braum is the safest pick right now. Not amazing into the composition of T1. They don't have strong melee frontlining. But it's still going to be very solid when that talent comes through, when the Graves is trying to get up at very low range. The one thing I do really like about the Braum is that it leans heavily in what Hanwha has drafted here, which has been their identity the entire tournament, which is skirmishes, right? Try and get that Xin Zhao Braum combo out on the map and go from there. Yeah, no, exactly right. I'm, uh, I'm actually very interested to see how this one's going to go, especially with more of that mid-game poke style that Chovy can now uh, take for himself. But... Ladies and gentlemen, what you're listening to now is one of the three regional remixes of the world's anthem. This is Burn It All Down, Pacifica remix representing Korea. Time to burn it all down in this best of five. I think it's it's so awesome that Hama Life Esports has stood up to T1 in the past because I think that everyone is correct in expecting T1 to be the favorites in this matchup. But I think that it is much closer than the fans want it to be. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I do think that there is a chance we see an up, upset tonight. It absolutely could happen. We know Honda Life Esports brought T1 to the brink in that gauntlet. They were almost the ones to go straight to groups and to skip that uh, play-in tournament. They almost were there one game away. I gotta say, I'm, I was already excited, right? It's, it's, it's the LCK teams, it's a rematch of the gauntlet. So getting me even more excited. Yeah, I really like it. It's, 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 it's kind of low-key as well, which I really appreciate. You know, you don't need to go into Grand Deux when the match in front of you is this amazing. Yeah, I felt like we needed to be, like, speaking, uh, like, saying something far more profound. Yeah. Um, but I think... I think hey, it's, I only think it's only game one. It's only game one, guys. Justice. You know, we've got more time. Yeah, hopefully we can practice. <laughs> we're going to have to... Um, <laughs> we're going to have to request to have that song just put on. Maybe if we get a lull state or something like oh, that, we yeah. can just request the, the music. Um, could be uh, how it works out. But here we are under the rift for game number one. T1 have elected to be on blue side as they were, of course, the highest seed. Humble Life now will be playing from red. Both of these team compositions full of comfort for both of these teams. I yeah. think that when you have a look at the, the tier list of these champions and where they would sit, I think T1's probably got a stronger comp, um, quote unquote. Uh, but I think Humble Life have a lot of the tools that they would like. I think that what I'm drawn to is Morgan on this Aurelia and seeing whether or not he's actually going to be able to have an impact. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, you know, between both soul laners of these two teams, um, the, the different power that they have. And remember, you can uh, tweet in as well. Use that hashtag Verizon 5G all chat. Let us know what you thought about uh, about the regional anthem. I think it's super cool, uh, this new idea. So let us know what you think. Also, let us know whether you think that I am a complete moron. Uh, for predicting that Hama Life is going to win this, because based on the fan vote, I think that uh, there's a lot of people that might. But you have been right thus far. You <laughs> believed in yeah. Hanwha when no one else did, and that faith did indeed pay off. Uh, when we look at the early pathing here, completely unsurprising. Willow is pathing away from top. Uh, Morgan will not be receiving any attention um, this game, like he hasn't in the past. And I do wonder, especially with the setup that's available in both mid and bot, whether we're going to see any attention paid to that, especially with the Zin, I think, in terms of early dueling with both the Zoe or the Brom, a lot stronger than what T1 has available. Think Ona needs a little bit more time. Also, not gone for any of the aggressive summoners. No Ignite, Flash, or TP, or TP rather. Yeah, and uh, I want to talk about sort of a bit of the best of five mentality as well, as this is our first best of five of the tournament. I think one of the best ideas in a best of five series is to start. With your series. best foot forward? <laughs> well, not, no, 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 not with, I mean, yes, obviously, but I think starting with a little bit more of a scaling focus with champions like, you know, the Orianna, the Aphelios, for example, so that the onus isn't on you to be proactive. Sure. Because when it is all of this pressure, as well as going to come in and have a look for Faker, but Faker, of course, the king of being ganked early in the mid lane, knows exactly what's going on. 
Um, yeah, the reason I, I kind of interjected and said best foot forward is for me, because I thought this comp, what we're seeing from both of these teams is so much stylistically what they like to play, right? You've got Morgan on a split pushing champion where he can actually initiate for his team. He's not on a big damage dealer, right? And I, I do really feel like if you're going to start a best of five like this, you know, you just play standard, you play to your strengths, and then you evolve as the series goes on. And uh, my question going into the mid game is, is C1 going to be able to generate a lot of the laning leads like they have been able to do against basically every other team? We've seen this uh, Thalios for Guma, uh, Kana's Graves or Jace, whichever he is on at the time, uh, be able to generate immense CS leads, obviously in mid, not really within the realm of expectations considering the uh, level of laner that uh, Chovy is. And also Atlas, I'm, I'm kind of hurt, you know, oh, yeah. that you didn't pay as much attention to play-ins because... You know that there's been there's been best of fives in oh, players well, have yeah. been well, I, mean, I mean yes, but not in, in, not so far in, <laughs> since the group stage. I, there's a different I, scale I, I, here, Chronicler. The, the, That's not what I'm most, saying. The most beautiful thing of it that I know that you've been so invested in Hanba's <laughs> journey. So I know that you know this. <laughs> no, well, of course I know that. Oh yeah, this is the first of the best of fives of this stage oh, of worlds. Okay, let's yes. let's uh, let's maybe go with that. Th thank you for uh, this damage ready. though. As yeah, Fake is down to about a hundred health. A Show couple me. more autos. We'll need to come through. Command Protect is going to make sure that Faker does survive with his flash intact. His hook connects on the bottom side, but Willer is here in the nick of time. Right, we'll be totally fine here. Scuttles traded. And, uh, you know, what I was going to get into here is Chovy is the type of player who will put the threat on with the Zoe. A lot of Zoe players play a lot more passively. They're sometimes fearful of ganks, potentially. As oh. we got action all over the place. Yeah, Morgan going for a bit of a trade. Working yeah. out pretty nicely there, as he had just teleported back in, so don't get overly excited, everyone. This is, of course, Kana just trying to get as much as he can before getting that teleport off, uh, restocking on some items, as, of course, uh, Morgan is a bit of a soldier. He's got a backup sword and his sword and shield. Uh, he is ready to go to battle. Kana comes back to lane here, but something I wanted to point out earlier uh, in terms of the stylistic differences between these two teams is that with Hanalife Life Esports, the majority of their damage comes from Chovy, 31 compared to Morgan sitting at 19. And the exact opposite is true of T1, where Kana sits at 31% of the team's damage and Faker sits at 19. And I think that big difference is what's so interesting between these two teams is we're going to see in these drafts, Chovy needs to be on champions, I think, to find success versus T1, where he can carry and do damage. If you put him on a global champion against a team like T1, that's decision-making is so good, and is there going to falter on macro, and he isn't going to get Morgan fed and get deft ahead as easily as he would against some of the weaker teams, I think there will be a struggle here for Hunter Life Esports. That's why I was mentioning the victor. I like this Zoe pick quite a lot, and I think picks like Azir are going to continue to be banned. And what I'm really liking from T1, and Khan also should be very much in the know that Wheeler is here. Yeah, Morgan doesn't have a reset right now as Wind Becomes Lightning does connect. There's the ulti to come forward from Canary. He is going to be absolutely fine, and Ona not coming in for the assist doesn't give away his position. Yeah, really nice smoke screen there. But what we saw was that the reason why I was fairly certain that Connor was going to be fine is because Willow was double spotted. There were two wards in his jungle, and we saw that the moment that he appeared on those wards, Guma, Yushi, and Carrier used that time to also go in a very aggressively on that bot side and try and keep the shove in that lane. And that is something that I think T1 has done exceptionally, even domestically, is how much they force Pryo uh, based on the knowledge that they have, is Chovy. Yeah, Shockwave gonna come through. There's the hook perfectly lined up as Chovy just didn't want to flash. Eventually he will, but they also have to invest the exhaust from Vista. So a lot of power taken away now from Humwell Life Esports. Yeah, it's a bit of a risky position there for Chovy to be in, considering they didn't know where Carrier was. He loves to roam. It's one of the things that you're going to see from this guy on his Nautilus, obviously on his Thresh. Every single time he plays it, you give him a chance to get out of lane, and he's going to look for an opportunity. And he was standing just in range of that hook, and that's two, uh, you know, well, actually just one, but the one big flash tool now is gone for Chovy. And you get two big things out of this. One is going to be this extra prio. Now you're grouped up, heading towards the top side of the map before this Herald spawns. Yeah, it's almost T1 time on the map right now, as we are <laughs> approximately 40 seconds away. Oh, from yeah. that Rift Herald spawning, and right now T1 are in a fantastic position to take that one away. Currently with a slight gold lead just from laning advantages that they picked up for themselves as Carrier puts down a ward, gets the good news that Morgan has no idea what's going on. Willa comes on over, he's trying to scan things out, but Morgan's going to have to play very defensively here. We'll see whether he does actually blade search forward or look for some of this CS as Carrier now searching for the hook, finds the play first. End of the line comes on in, and that is a very dead Aurelia and first blood to T1.
Two huge plays from Karia right off the get-go. Takes away Chovy's flash. And they're able to get Pryo and set up for gathering around this Herald. Then they're able to, right before it spawns, pick off Morgan with a fantastic cook. He has a control ward with him, is able to verify Morgan doesn't know he's coming. And T1, they love to fight for this Herald. Sometimes they flip games over it. It's actually one of the things that Hunwife should be looking forward to is T1 might take a bad fight on this Herald. But when you get that free kill, you push Chovy away, you get his flash. This is just easy pickings for this early game for T1. And if Morgan doesn't die there, if the coordination is a little bit better, Wheeler says, hey, my rep buff is missing. They might be in topside. They know how much T1 loves to play towards this. I think they might be fine because Deft and Vista were able to shove in an entire wave into that bot lane turret. And without a teleport available, there was no recourse. But because that kill was given up, no contest was possible surrounding the Herald. It's been a kill. It's been the turret plates picked up. And now all of a sudden, Gumayushi is getting even more fat. That wave that he missed on bot side doesn't matter anymore. And T1 might be looking to just push further and further, which is their early game has been incredibly dominant. Uh, in the LSK, even in games that they've lost, those first 15 minutes are always lethal. It's going to be so much harder for Humble Life to kind of skirmish their way back into this game. Picks with the bubble or possibly with Brom and Jin Zhao finding an angle somewhere yeah. on the map. I mean, Jin Zhao, Jin Zhao is a champion, you know, obviously wants to get that big lead early on. Ooh, Let's hold nice. that thought. Cute little shockwave here from Faker, just getting a fair bit of damage onto Chovy. Chovy should be able to trade back quite nicely, though, as T Faker takes the nap and is going to take the worst of it. Is Chovy still wanting a little bit more here? Finds himself a cleanse on the ground, but it's not going to help him out too much here. The problem with this too for Hunter Life Esports is that even though Chovy gets the better of the trade here in mid lane, they're not going to be able to get a cross map play. You had Khan on the bottom side of the map immediately pushing the wave there. Now Morgan's catching it. Chovy's pushed out a lane here. They can't contest a Drake. They can't start a Drake rather. And so T1 just have ultimate control on the map in all lanes and all parts. And you just have to be so careful of giving T1 this little bit of an edge with a composition like this where they already have such safe engage across all parts of the game. And also look at the power of these T1 picks. You can argue that, of course, the talent in of itself not going to be the greatest. I think that outside of moving up front and denying vision, you can. It might be a little bit hard to find a specific engage. But simultaneously, like Graves, Oriana, Aphidius, all these picks in the Thresh. mid to late game are going to be <laughs> yeah. terrifying, right? And it's carry as fresh. Um, we've seen him have, I think, perhaps the most dominant support game that we've had the entire year in the LCK on the specific champion. I think it was one of the most impressive Thresh games that I've ever seen and you um, in my yeah. life. And I've been casting a lot of League of Legends. <laughs> um, yep. Seen a fair bit of that. Well, this streak is going to go over for free because there's a little bit of a hole in T1's vision and Chovy was getting the better end there of the mid lane. So can't contest here as T1 don't know about this, don't have full vision. It's actually taken away there by Willer. So this ends up being a nice trade back for Hunter Life, basically getting an objective free. It's not as equivalent, of course, as the power you're going to get in that Herald. But they're looking for something here. Bottom side, Kana does not have vision. Yeah, Will is going to come on down here, even on levels here between the jungler and the top laner. This Kana has been on an island just a little bit here. Some last minute plates to come through, or last three minute plates, I guess. If you want to be technically correct. As Gumiushi looking for Vista here underneath the turret. The flash gets him out of the way of the hook as Vista's looking to keep himself alive. Ona now in trouble as Deft turns up once again. He gets exhausted immediately. Vista, what the heck was that? Unbelievable play from the Hummer Life support. And they take away T1's jungler. Chobi now looking to try and get some more done, but Kanner is going to turn up once again. Decent little paddle star, and they get the flash out for the shockwave. And even the bottom side of the map, Aurelia's getting pushed there. There's there's waves crashing into a turn. He's going to get another plate here at least. And this is a win in all three lanes here for Hanoi Life Esports. And this is a really big swing. And T1 think they can go for the top side play because it's their strong side, right? They've been diverting all their resources. They know we're going to give them Drake. It doesn't matter. We swapped our bot side to top to make sure that we can keep that push going, that we can get more plates onto our Felios. And then they think it's easy peasy. It's a dive on the Brom. We have three people here, but Ono isn't actually there at the start of the play. A little bit over eager from T1. And now at Gold League, that was 1.6k. All of a sudden, a lot less there. Yes, there is still a lead, but this does show that you need to respect Hanwha. And talk about Chovy, Daft has had a stellar tournament thus far. Just picked up the first kill, finished his mythic. And it's, it is looking hopeful, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yep, nice little drowsy there from Trovi. Picks himself up a claw, but Carrier is here at exactly the right time uh, to make everything okay. And the, the, the amount of pressure that 
Chovy has put on Faker this game has meant that he hasn't been able to make any teleport plays. And this is something that Faker has found so much success with Arise with, for example. We've seen him on TF, which is why we were calling for that ban in the draft. He ends up being with his team in those top side plays you were just talking about so often. But because so much pressure has been put on him, he hasn't been able to utilize that teleport for utility only for lanes so far. As you can see, he teleports right back because he ran out of mana there. And it's really unfortunate because that's one advantage he had over Chovy. Had he not been so pushed in, could have looked for something there on the top side, but he's just been sitting in lane. Also, very important is that we see a really big swap here from what the T1 has mostly done, which is funnel all resources into Kana. Right? They've been uh, in most of their games, not all of them, but the, the biggest amount has been Faker on a global champion and try to get Guma will be in lane, Carrier will be out, Owner's camping top, and Kana's getting all the resources that he needs to carry. But in this game, it's been all about Gumayushi, and this is something that T1, we've seen them do every now and then. Uh, we also saw them do when Teddy was on the team, and he was the one playing, uh, or he's still on the team, but when he was the one actually <laughs> yeah. playing, uh, important clarification there. When he wasn't on the bench. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And... I, I am honestly very happily surprised to think that for Vista, that individual play in of itself might not look too big, but that is the type of momentum swings that have plagued T1 in the past. This team is incredibly good at finding early game leads, but actually maintaining them, they're not as strong as a team like Dom1, where once they get a lead, that, that lead is not going anywhere. But T1 have had a lot of these swings in the past. Now they go in on deft. Yeah, owners looking for the dive. This turret is so extraordinarily low. They get themselves the teleport out as Gumiushi taking a lot of damage here as well. Deft moving forward as Hanwa. They do have all the boys together. Yeah, they're Owner gonna look for a might fight need here. to get out of this one. Yeah, exactly right. Troll Ward goes down. Hanwa Life wrestle back some vision control. Right now, looking Herald. for Shelly, yeah. exactly right. I mean, this is this is actually an, an extremely aggressive play that T1 attempted. They were able to lantern owner in for him to jump over the wall. There's almost no turret there, but you're really underestimating the fact that bullet time can clear that wave. It's a, not really a feasible dive to pull off here. Well, owner's going to get slowed down by the Winter's Bite. Teleport available from the Graves. He is making his way towards the mid lane, utilizing it. We'll now get this minion wave pushed forward, but Hanwha got the prize they were looking for. I would have loved if Kana just stayed bot and pushed that bot side turret, right? Could have just gotten that. T1, they were really looking for a fight there, but no one on Hanwha actually making a mistake, walking up too far and getting the, uh, getting hooked in. Now, Gumiyushi is still going to be able to pick this up, but I do love the investment from Hanwha to like try and actually hold on to their objectives as much as they can. Uh, once the teleport was forced, though, I think T1 should have said, okay, we've already got the summoner. We can give them Herald just back off, let Tana, uh, Kana get the turret, and then look further. I don't think that that teleport from Kana had to be invested, but clearly a team call. Uh, and that does mean that you get a little bit less than you could have gotten out of that play, but it's still a growing lead for T1. Yeah, it, it does also, I think, really showcase the Hanwha Life Esports knows their opponent well. Like, they're playing so well around what T1 would do in this scenario. They're prepared to counter this dive and take the Rift Herald because they know T1's going to be coming at this timing. And that's a good sign for a best of five like this. You're not figuring it out on the fly. You already know. Now they're going to look for some extra gold here with this second Herald. Yep. Tarek going to go down low. Shockwave not quite able to find Chobi there as the ulti comes through. Faker so incredibly low after the bullet time that isn't going to fall down. Doesn't have teleport, so he's going to be away for a little while as Chovy as well under half HP. See Hama Life Esports still wanting to fight for this Drake. Five versus four. Drowsy comes through. This is part of the danger time for this Zoe. Collateral damage just wide, sidestepped by the Zoe. And T1 wrestled out of the river as there's the Moonlight Vigil to come down. Morgan could be in trouble here. Flashes the hook. Not quite long enough. Great double stun there from Morgan, but they are still going to be able to get pressure onto this turret. T1 wanting to grab that as now Vista looking to come round once again. There's the ulti to come through for Morgan. Only one person can take that lantern and now Kana could be in trouble. He's down so low and trying to get the damage out as Deft finishes him off in the end. Morgan likely to fall as well. It's two for one so far for T1. And Harmon Life Esports now forced to leave. Flash comes out from Chovy. That's one that he stole away as T1 are on the wrong side of this Drake, but now with the man advantage. It's not yeah. over just yet. They keep looking. I mean, this is so risky for Honor Life Esports here. Oh, no. Parkouring his way in. There's the Shockwave ball delivery system here. And Vista, he's going to go golden for a little while. Stands beside Willa. Keeps himself alive for the moment. As Ona, below half health, great hook to come through from Carrier, but there is another stopwatch from this team. Of course, Willa, no way out. Wasn't going to invest the flash, as it turns out, as 
Another bubble lands, but I think the T1 have finally won the fight. What like, do you this, think, Jonathan? The, this is the most trophy life esports scenario that you could imagine, as he's sitting back with mostly full health on the Zoe, trying to hit these pot shots while it's everyone else is blocking, and they're coming back in. Does Depth have ultimate? No, he doesn't. This owner could be in trouble here. One last auto. It's actually going to be the Zoe that picks it up with a bubble through the wall. Ocean Soul is what the Rift is going to be made out of, and that's actually amazing for a Zoe, but also pretty good for a town lying in wait to kill someone with all of these extra brushes. And if this skirmish shows us anything, I can't even call it the team fight because it felt like a 2v2, a 3v3, a 4v4 all happening at the same time if you look at how drawn out it is, right? Yeah. Both of these two teams go in very hard. Kana is able to actually stay alive. One of the big powers of the Graves is how tanky, deceptively, he really is. And there's so many moments where you think it's over, but then it's not. It's not over. <laughs> yeah, it's still not over, actually. Is two levels behind. Will is going to go in onto Faker here. Still, no, doesn't have the Crescent card available. It's about to say he did. Certainly did not. But Faker is just going to get away. No one there to back him up just yet. So and many this there is too. such a clear-cut sign of, even though I think in terms of macro, T1 is still the one making the better moves, right? They're earlier to the objectives. I think the shot calling is a little bit crisper. But in terms of raw mechanics, Hanwha Life is showing why they're in this quarterfinal. Yeah, Vista caught in amongst a whole lot of people as the Shockwave finds absolutely no one still. Carrier locks down that kill. In the meantime, Kana takes the turret on the bottom side, and T1 are adding winning to their winning. I actually, I, I'm not on Basura. I need to see the replay. I think Faith Faker actually pulled Vista out of his stand behind Brom, so he didn't have the opportunity to jump back after he got in. Yeah, it definitely looked like that. And that's that's one of those things that you can do as Orianna. It's so strong against Xin Zhao and the Aurelia, and of course the Brom in this very rare circumstance where you can actually pull it off, is actually pull people out of their engages as death Kana? might be in trouble. Yeah, kind of looking for the dive right underneath his turret. He had the shield bow, and he's absolutely fine. Just walks up yeah. and takes down the AD carry of Harmalai Esports. He's got plated steel caps he's gonna live through the damage that misfortune can put off and that extended trade you're always gonna win when you have the shield bow even under turret and he just can't get out of there. there's no mobility whatsoever for the misfortune a heroic play here from kana and t it, t1 are completely in control of this game now really loving the graves first pick oh, <laughs> really yeah. paying off that diving uh, as an ad carry you know another ad carry on the turret no problem 20 minutes into the game and uh, now we're starting to see the acceleration, and this is where I think the true test begins for Hanwha. You've been able to match up thus far, but now it's back-to-back -back trades that are slightly favorable for T1. And let's not forget, even though I think the gold lead in of itself is surmountable, if you look at the Hanwha comp, when playing from behind, champions like the Aurelia, like the Jinzhou, are a very bad experience. Yeah, and this is the mid-game, right? This is exactly when Hanwha Life designed their composition to be strong. Now they have to try and work on a split push comp that is much more difficult to actually utilize. And using hashtag Verizon 5G all chat, Tom has messaged in to say, I don't have the same faith that Atlas does, but I love an underdog story. Anyone remember TPA? I think um, there might be a lot of people that don't, to be perfectly honest, because that was a great many years ago, but I certainly do, Tom. We all I remember. Absolutely Tom knows. Do. Tom knows what's up. and. You know, going back to to what you guys were kind of getting at here with this composition in terms of what this comp could do from behind, it really is going to be so based upon these engaged champions now for Honda Life Esports and the front line that needs to be done for Chovy and Deft. And it, it, it is kind of odd and, and ironic that Chovy can also himself be the best initiation that Honda Life Esports have because if he sleeps the right target, there is so much follow-up engaged, there's so much burst there. But if you can't pull that off and you keep getting shut down every time you try to go in as a Xinjiao, every time you go in as the Aurelia, and T1 catch you every time a Shockwave you, then how do you team fight against this Aphelios that's always going to have more consistent damage than this Misfortune? The Graves, that's always going to have longer fight damage more than the Aurelia will. And I, I, I'm not entirely sure how is Hanwha, if you don't find a big break into the game within the next five to 10 minutes, you're gonna be able to stand up to the late game. Look at Guguyushi's items. He's already gotten the Lord Dominix against the amount of health stacking that's gonna be uh, available for Hanwha. It's gonna provide incredible value. A Little bit anti-synergistic, you know, when you get the, the extra health, the shield from uh, from your shield bow, but against the amount of dive that's available from Hanwha Life is understandable. Also note how stalwart T1 have been defending their mid lane turret, knowing that, not taking that, as I'm sure you you would have pointed out, Wolf, had I not I swept was that for you. I know you were waiting for it. <laughs> um, it becomes so much harder to actually find those bubbles and get that consistent impact, because I talked about the relative lack of engage for T1, right? You saw it a little bit in one of the earlier mid-game fights where they wanted to re-engage, but weren't able to. 
As they might go yeah. in here. Baker looking for the shockwave, finds it onto Willow there pretty comfortably as the ulti comes through to keep the Zinzao alive, but it's not going to work for long enough. The Gore Drinker certainly working out quite nicely, but it didn't change the fate of the Zinzao as Ono is looking to take care of that back line. They do back away though, just taking down the jungler just in time for this Ocean Drake to spawn. And this is where we have to start talking about that Zoe Turbo. We also have to start talking about the fact that with these lanes pushing here, and Kana has had so much pushing power this entire game for free, non-stop, you have no vision anymore. And if you don't have vision, Zoe is fighting blind, especially with all these brushes on Ocean Rift. So you're just not going to be able to even walk towards this. And you're just going to be throwing darts in the dark, essentially, as Chovy in this game if you can't win a team fight before an objective. Because T1 have so much pushing power, there's so much wave there with this comp as well. Like, you're just clearing waves and T1 are getting objectives. In addition to that, I think one of the problems that you're facing now as Hanwha is Chovy has gone for a very utility-based build, so he has a lot of survivability. He can throw out a lot of bubbles, right? Has the Everfrost, also went for the Lucidity Boots. Uh, but when it comes to wall damage output, it is not going to be as good as some of the builds that we, for example, seen BDD go for, where you do find those consistent one-taps. In addition to that, I don't think anyone can really match Kana in the side lane. And when your Aurelia can't reliably match someone inside, a lot of the value does get taken away. As shockwave. Oh, Chewie just walked into the Shockwave! He does use his Zonyas. Try and keep himself up, and now will flash away, but Willa is going to pay for his sins. The ulti comes down, and it is not going to save the Zin Zhao. Oh, no, not done just yet, as Everfrost looks to try and deny T1. But it looks like they might be aiming for a Baron instead, and that would be a massive swing oh. in this game in a position where T1 were already massively ahead. Yeah, they're already so far ahead. You don't have a jungler anymore as Hanalife Esports. 100% you can take this. Oh. Life, this is a mistake to challenge. Yeah, well, Carrier finds yet another hook, but there's no backup as now Morgan looking to get in there. Does dive into the back of the pit. as Hama looking for more. The Baron does go over to T1, but can they keep themselves alive? Will Ellen, any of these Barons make it out of the pit as Guma is about to say yes? The bullet time not finding the value they were looking for, but the bubble will now connect. And Chobi's going to find the Paddle Star there as well. So owner has been taken down. Two Barons remain on the side of T1, and it looks like two Barons will survive. Uh, the, the risk to actually challenge this as Hanalife Esports, despite what was a fairly successful team fight there, was so high. You end up getting wiped there. You might just lose the game in that moment. You're going to lose the rest of your map control. You're going to give over those inner turrets and inhibitor control as well. But they end up fighting it back. They take away some of those Baron buffs. And it's it's really, as we look at this Axe replay here, all about the fact that they're able to pick Carrier off alone. There's a little bit of a disconnect here between T1's frontline, well, really, Thresh, and the rest of the team. Because, yes, they know they, they have this Baron, they need to guarantee it, but your opponent doesn't have a smite. You could have turned this together a lot earlier, and now you've just given the opportunity for Morgan to close the gap on your squishy backline. And I want to, again, highlight Vista, able to both hit the Winter's Bite on Faker to make sure that he dies, Aurelia diving into the backline, and then also getting the passive on top of Guma Yushi, and it's only through that survivability that he has with the shield bow as well as with his red gun that he's able to stay alive throughout all that. The one downside, even though you pick up a couple of kills for Hanwa, is that I think as C1 you're still relatively happy. Kana you still, win, still yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. But also look at who the, uh, who the people are that still have the buff. Kana, who you want to put in the side lane, and then you have Aphelios in Guma, who's gonna just be there anyway, and you can set up a 4-1 and still utilize the power of the Baron. Well, speaking of utilizing things, Vista gonna throw out his ultimate. Ona just gonna say no. Uh, he is a bruiser assassin right now. Just too many archetypes here for this Talon, who is very, very strong. West Orn. Yeah, Chovy now diving over the wall. And uh, Faker looking to throw his orb out. Oh, that hook, very, very close to landing onto his former teammate there as Chovy. These portal jumps are dangerous, but he does need to try and utilize them as these turrets are just falling one after the other. Vista, no ultimate available, but he's still stepping forward, trying to deny this turret from T1, but it is not going to work. The Red Bull Baron power play ticking up to 2,000 gold. And T1's lead doing the same thing. And you can 6,000 right now. You can notice, too, in some of these fights, the point that Chronicle made earlier about Chovy's build here with the Everfrost. If you can't get close enough to ever use that, you're going to wish you had less survivability with that Zonius and actually just more pure damage. Because maybe you could blow somebody up because T1 are just grouped up. They have better vision. So if you just hit someone with a Paddle Star, with this low damage build, it's not going to be that impactful. T1 will just sit through it and move on. And if you're the one who has to carry these fights and look for picks and look for those blocks,
blow-ups. This build probably isn't it. Now, I understand that in the longer fight, the survivability might mean that he could carry that extended fight. But with where we are in this game, I don't think that longer fight almost ever happens. Biggest issue here for Hanwha Life is that Aiden the Gumiyushi just finished. Because what you saw earlier where Gumiyushi, you know, it's, it's a long fight <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and you're able to almost kill him. You don't quite get him, but at least you can walk out yourself. That walking out yourself, not happening anymore. The Infinity Edge is finished on this already incredibly fed of Phalios, meaning that as Humble Life, if you go in on Gumayushi now, either you 100 to zero him, or he will 1v9 the entire fight and blow you up. And then the problem with that is, talk so much about Gumayushi, but Kana, very fed as well for the CS lead, able to pick up a solo kill on Deft, able to pick up multiple turrets, and now Soul Point available for T1 if they pick up this Drake. Yeah, Bubble not gonna quite find Kana there. Saw Chovy fishing for it. Hamwa with some okay vision, but T1 doing their homework. They've tidied all of it up around this area. Hamwa now trying to protect that one ward that they have, but the orb sitting right in that brush. Kana gets on over. Remember, Faker's Shockwave, it is right there. It is ready to go as Ona taking down to half health. Hanwa still with a fair bit of fight left in them. Chovy looking for a bubble, doesn't quite find it there. As the teleport comes in, it's Faker that locks down the Drake as well as trying to keep himself alive once again. Flashes out, and he is going to survive for the moment, but T1 looking to try and race for this inhibitor turret in the mid lane, and they will have inside track to get themselves there. Look at the teleport top here from Kana, too. He's gonna go for this inhibitor turret. You've got two problems at once here as Hanalife Esports. Morgan just used his teleport to come into that fight so late. Then they had to flash out. Willer's flashless. I mean, T1 are looking to actually start finishing this game shortly here. You make any mistakes as Hanalife, the game ends. Well, now Morgan trying to go in. Actually, just a bit of a drive by there as Carrier's Lanterns have just been amazing this game. I think the support play in general has been, from both supports, has yeah. been impeccable this game. Also love the teleport from Chovy there. Might not have seen it, but he teleported on his own Nexus turret to get to the wave as soon as possible, especially with Spellbook. Not losing out too much, because if he hadn't done that, pretty sure that Kana at the very least would have gotten an inhibitor turret uh, with the amount of damage he has available, possibly an inhibitor. And I think Hogwarts Life, they're hanging in there valiantly, but again, and this has been the recurring theme ever since that early skirmish that took about a minute uh, <laughs> yeah. and was like at three different places uh, back to back to back. It's T1 that actually wins, right? They yeah. have the gold lead, they have soul point now. Once they get the ocean sword, it's going to be even harder with the amount of sustain already available on this team. And I think your window as Hanwha has now closed. Uh, as Hanwha Life Esports, I think you have to group up on Baron. I mean, you had to group up faster and you can't because you have to deal with those waves, but you have to fight for vision first here and foremost. And if you can catch somebody with a battle star, get a pick, that's how you start. I mean, that's not going to be too bad for Honor Life Esports. That's going to be on cooldown for a while here. But you have to fight for this vision 100%. And the fact that they have two teleports missing here is so problematic. You can't flank anymore. Yeah. Looking to go in for something, potentially. Not able to quite find anything here as T1 just own the rift. And against a Zoe, like, she just can't do anything when that's the case. Owner's even going to steal away this red buff. The entire jungle on both sides of the map belongs to T1. Is okay, Owner going to take a little bit of a nap here, but he's just so tanky. Willa can't say the same thing as Morgan looks for some stuns, but he's not going to quite find them. The Crescent Guard looks to try and keep Willa alive, but it isn't going to be enough as Kana's going to get knocked up, but that is just disengaged from Hanwha Life. Another dive forward as it is going to be a bit sleepy time for Owner, but he is going to be able to make his way out. and. All of these attempted picks, Trovi's landed so many bubbles, but it just does not matter. And while this happened, T1 had a way set up on bot side to shove in. That's been pushed into the turret, getting damage, giving up free minions as well. I mean, th this is a fight that T1 just avoided by tossing ultimates into a choke point and letting the waves here do the work. There's no inhibitors down here, but they had push in top and mid. Remember, Kana teleported earlier to shove that wave into the inhibitor turret, so T1 tossing a shockwave. Kana even ults onto the red buff. You push Hano Life Esports back, you have removed all the vision around the Baron pit, and T1 are like, yeah, use two ults before this fight starts, but you can't teleport flank because I know Morgan's teleport's down, Chovy's teleport's down, so I don't even get to fight as Honda Life Esports. If you're Honda Life Esports, you don't get to flank, you don't get to come forward. And T1 are like, well, now you got to clear waves. I'm going to kill the Baron. Look at how much damage we have 32 minutes into the game with the Zephelios. There's no way you can contest. There's just absolutely no way. And T1, calm, slow and steady, going to win the race here, it looks like. Yeah, Willa able to get himself a Raptor. And uh, that's good news.
if I'm alive esports right now. That's what we have to be talking about when it comes to the positives. Like that is, no, this is not a good thing, Chronicle. I'm not trying to say that things are okay because that is the most okay that they are. Is being able to get a Raptor camp. Because this is, like, the game has ticked past the Hanwha time. They had their time, theoretically, it was about 15 minutes into the game until about 25 is when they theoretically should have been strong. That time has gone. T1 in so much control as Hanwha trying to do the very best to defend their base, but two inhibitors go down, three-man shockwave! Just found out of nowhere from Faker as Willa. The only way that he can go is forward. He is in Zhao. Kid has not changed, and T1, they're looking to end it all right here, right now, as Morgan, very low as well, trying to defend that one Nexus turret. Visca being a valiant defender, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The Nexus turrets just melt at the hands of Gumiushi's Crescendum. The Nexus going to follow suit, and T1, all business in game one, destroy Hanwha Life Esports. Very dominant performance. The early game, Hanwha Life Esports did trade a few back. They were able to stop that push on the top, on the top side. They got the follow-up Rift Herald there. But in the mid to late game, they didn't play to their win conditions as well as T1 did. 